We all know that time is our most precious resource and saving it can make all the difference in our productivity. In this video, we're gonna take a look at four VS Code Git extensions that are real game changers to make you more productive. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy and this channel is all about helping you to become a better developer with the latest tools and techniques. Okay, let's start things off with our first plugin. Git Lens. Git Lens adds a ton of Git features to VS Code. Once you install the plugin, you'll come to the source control tab. You'll see that it gives you a bunch of different views like commits, commit details, file history, branches, remotes, and so on. When you click on some of the commits and then click on the file, you'll see that it gives you a diff of what changed with that commit. Another feature that I use quite often is the search and compare. I can click on search commits and see that I can search by message, author, and so on. Git Lens also adds a lot of different command palette options. If I hit command shift P and open the command palette and then search for Git Lens, I can see that there are a lot of different options to choose from. Git Lens also adds other features such as a status bar blame and current line blame and hovers. Activating the hover is very easy. Just hover over the line blame and it'll give you details about that particular commit. You can open this commit in the commit graph, reveal on the sidebar, or just click the commit hash to go directly to the commit and see what else was changed in that commit. Git Lens has a ton of different settings you can change. To change those, open the command palette and search for Git Lens and choose Open Settings. Here you are given a ton of different options to customize Git Lens. One thing to note about Git Lens is that some of its features are paid, meaning you have to upgrade to their Pro plan in order to unlock their Git Lens Plus features. Some of those features include the commit graph, work trees, that allow you to work on multiple branches at the same time in the same repo, which I haven't tried out. Maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. And then visual file history, which allows you to see the history of a file, including when the changes were made and how big the changes were. I'm not sure how useful this is. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is useful. Up next on our list is Git Graph. If you don't want to pay for Git Lens Pro to get access to the Git Graph, then this is a great free option. After you install the plugin in the command palette, you can see that there are several Git Graph options. To see the graph, just choose View Git Graph. I will admit it's not as good as the Git Lens Graph, but it's pretty close. Here you can see both of the graphs side by side. One thing I really like about the Git Lens Graph is that it has the tags right here on the left side, as opposed to in line with the Git Graph extension. And now moving on to number three, Git Ignore. The Git Ignore extension adds the Add Git Ignore option to the command palette. When you choose this option, you can then choose the template you want to generate your Git Ignore file from. If you already have a Git Ignore file, the plugin will ask you if you want to append or overwrite. The templates for this extension come from the GitHub Git Ignore repo. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. And last on the list is Git Project Manager. Just like the other plugins, Git Project Manager adds options to the command palette. Just search for GPM. But before you can use the plugin, you have to set your base projects folder. To do this, go to VS Code Settings, search for GPM, and find Git Project Manager, Base Projects Folders, click on Edit in Settings.json. Here you can add a list of strings where it will look for the Git projects. Just enter the full path. Once you've entered your path, just save the file. Now if we go back to the command palette and search for GPM, we can choose Open Git Project and we're given a list of projects that are pulled from that directory. This is great if you find yourself switching projects a lot. And that's all for this video. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. If you found this content helpful, be sure to check out some of my other videos that are aimed at helping you to become a better developer. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.